much for sharing that. I think it's gonna someone is gonna reach out to them uh, tentatively after this episode. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I think it's important because um, most of the time it seems as though we do it by ourselves. You know, it's like a one man or one woman's uh, journey. But you know, there's uh, you know there's this African saying that it takes a village to raise a child. So, yeah. So we say that a lot. I don't know why it's primarily from Africa, but it reminds us that it yeah. takes. There's a there's actually a big badge on um, big flag in Harvard. It literally says it takes a village to raise a child. Oh really? <laughs> in the grad school of education. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I, you know, one thing that you brought up that really resonated with me is that you said something about your heart, um, mm -hmm. uh, something in your heart, and what that reminds me is. Um, one philosophy that I've been learning about called the Yangming philosophy that actually okay. worked on your heart. Um, if can you just share your personal experience with the Yangming philosophy and how you, are in your own experience uh, of how Yangming philosophy has helped you uh, develop your your heart and also how you look at the world? Yeah, definitely. Um, I find it a a very practical way of self reflection and self awareness. Um, and it's really a it's it's a it's a methodo methodology for action. No matter um, people want to do a startup business or they're making their personal um, life plan or even building a relationship, anything um, that needs development and growth can can apply these four steps philosophy, which is the um, the heart mind, um, the Tao the virtues and the matters, the four steps. The basics is whatever you want to do, you're gonna start from the heart mind because that's where, that's where the motivation and um, uh, uh, drives come from. Um, and, then, and then the Tao, the way things go uh, and the virtues, how you do it. And then um, the matters, you know. Um, I find it actually very, very international. People think it's it's a tra it's traditional Chinese culture, so it's the it's the West it's the Eastern wisdom that doesn't apply worldly uh, worldwide. But actually, the big secret I found is it is so global. Um, I study the Western life coaching skills, and it's exactly the same logic. And I study the um, if you look at the Simon Sinek's golden golden circle theory, it's also exactly the the, the why, how, what. It's so if you look at secret uh, uh, carefully, it's really the the heart doll um, virtual matters formula. So just found it very um, fascinating. That's that's pretty amazing. And I think one thing I mean I'm from Africa and it resonates with me as well. So I think it can is yeah, it's a very international, um, you know. Um, I actually relate to it. So I think they, they can be an international presence in terms of just like the mindset and. Yeah, because it's very close to the essence of human nature about yeah. how people grow. Exactly, exactly. And so uh, that's pretty amazing. And we're going to talk about like the 10 year plan of Yami Falls a bit. I wanted to run up two things um, first. So you recently um, transitioned into the chief human resource, um, the position of the chief human resource officer at Brain Co. Yeah. Can you just tell us yeah. a little bit about Brain Co and what you do there? Yeah, um, so I joined Brinko um, about three, four, four years ago. Um, back then, it's still a um, on-campus incubated startup team of Harvard. Um, and the founders are um, a few PhD candidates from the brain science department of Harvard. Um, so they developed this, this, sen this sensor technology that can um, monitor people's brainwave from the forehead. And then their AI algorithm translate that into um, your real-time attention level, relaxation level, um, even more um, medical related um, autism and depression, sleep problems. So all those um, kind of things can be monitored by your brainwave. And this um, simple, not simple, this sophisticated um, brain science technology is doing amazing job in helping people um, grow better in their um, ability of memory, focus, um, attention level. So I was working on the educational technology product that helps students to focus better in classrooms by providing their teachers a real-time 
visualization of their brain activity. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds scary, right? But uh, it's already uh, monetized and industrialized. It's uh, it's in good sales in China and the US. Um, and yeah, so we've been um, we've been doing that since four years ago. Um, and then I found myself during the process of product development, where I work with a lot of engineers and scientists. I found myself a very people centered person, so I can't deal with tech anymore. <laughs> I I gotta deal with people. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so I, I requested, um, I talked to my team, uh, our co-founders, partners team. Um, hey, I really want to do this, and I think we we are reaching a um, a point where um, a big HR system need to be built um, so that we can develop sustainably. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's how I tra transitioned. Well, just one last question on this: How did this your know, does your current role ch change the way you think about education? Like what was the one thing that might have been uh, some learning within this within brain code that you have you have learned out of it and say, hey, maybe I have to think of education differently? Yeah, you know that's a great question. I spent a whole year thinking about that. Um, what's the meaning of my work? Helping people um, grow stronger brain. That's basically what I was doing. Um, and what I realized is there are so many techniques and ways that we can use to um to train our brain to be stronger just like we go to the gym to train our muscle we can train our brain to become better to become stronger but essentially that's still not the fundamental um that's not still not the fundamental um way or essence of how people develop and i think that essence actually comes from the heart so instead of brain power what i want to grow on people is the heart power is the ability to um arise this inner strength that can um hold you and support you to do anything you want um and actually calling it a human resource um is really not accurate i want to rather call it heart resource so i want to call myself the chief heart resource manager <laughs> of Franco. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, my heart. Um, so uh, going now into the last phase of our conversation, um, what was your journey like becoming an actual life coach? I know uh, we mentioned earlier in the, of this episode, you know, you help students, you know, online, maybe the educational experience, you know, the, you know, what they have gained in terms of technical skills to align with what they, what their life should be like. Um, mm. How did you, how do you yourself become, you know, realize your own soul that you needed to work on that because you have mentioned yeah. a little bit of that on your education, but, you know, yeah. let's give us your journey of how you started. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a very people person. And if anyone knows the um, MBTI character test, I'm a totally um, ENFP, which is extrovert, intuitive, feeling oriented and perceiving person and that's perfect for a coach and teacher type um, exactly. Exactly. so um i just after taking that test i'm not giving a plug in for the test but it works <laughs> yeah. um so a lot of it people works come, it works <laughs> before i became a coach a lot of people came to me for advices about life and career choices already um but i found myself i i don't want to give them random um, advices without actually knowing what challenges they're going through. And guess what? Even after I know everything they are going through, I still cannot give them advice because that's the life they are living. And in coaching, um, we really believe that everybody is um, whole, resourceful, and creative already. So we've got all the ways and resources to solve any problem we have. And the job that a coach does is really just to um, facilitate the um, inner exploration to find that strength and, um, and uh, motivation uh, to solve any problem. So, um, and I, when I heard about the con heard this concept about coaching, I, it just really fascinated fascinates me because I what my biggest motivation um, waking up every day it's seeing people's change 
um, not only physically or um, on the surface, sort of quote unquote, but really um, in their inner world. So I became, I got the training, I spent two years um, getting the tr training necessary and the certification necessary to become a um, professional life coach. It's actually, it's actually harder than a Harvard degree. It's been, I spent longer time and more effort in getting the certificate. And I, I think I coached about a hundred people so far um, on a long-term basis. And one um, similarity I found on all my coaches is um, people really need to push through their, um, if, if people want to grow and make some change happen, um, there are some necessary elements in this process. One, a clear goal, a clear purpose or a clear destination. Two, um, the inner leader or what we call the captain that give you the access to the, the, the positive energy. And the third, um, the courage to um, shut up your saboteur, um, which is, you know, the, the courage to break all these um, self-critics and self-doubts. Um, yeah, so I found that fascinating. And um, I've been able to actually um, help people to, to, to achieve those and um, get a clearer understanding of what is it that they really want to do and how to do it. That's, that's pretty, I felt like I was in a coaching session. That's really good. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> I felt like I was, it's, it's really good. I, I, I think the, the points you listed, uh, it makes sense. And for me, like, um, it's, it's really impactful, not to digress, but it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, how do you get clients? Do people have to reach out to you or do you, someone has to recommend it to reach out to you uh, for your life coaching? Mm, I I actually don't. Um, so a lot of people work on uh, who, who work as full time coaches. They have a lot of um, recruitment um, business. But I guess for me, it's really mostly um, friends and um, students who recommend people who they think are in need. Um, but this year from my birthday, which was February uh, 15th, I started a project, uh, which I call a social experiment. So I offered um, in, for the whole year, I'm going to offer 100 hours pro bono um, free coaching hours to young people who are between 18 to 35. Um, so they can book a free um, discovery session with me um, to sort of work on any change or limit that they want to push through. And with that 100 people, I want to be able to um, figure out what is the fundamental essence of um, people's development. Um, yeah, so um, anyone who's interested in getting a free coaching session should definitely reach out to me. Definitely, please reach out. I, th I, it's, I think it's going to change your life. Uh, um, that's no seriously, it's free. It's, it sounds really good. And we're going uh, gonna to put some links in the podcast episode to people that's going to reach out, okay. uh, sign up for that as well. Okay, so uh, one thing that I also really like about uh, the Young Min Philosophy Academy is that it provides, going back to Young Min Philosophy Academy, it, they provide a 10-year plan. Um, yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about that and maybe how that has also shaped the way you're doing how yeah. you often and how you get you know, yeah do yeah so um i think the most one of the most powerful young master yang ming has taught us many many um powerful um words that no matter what hardships you are in um in life there's always one line that's gonna you know, give you the light to 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 um, get through the difficulties. To me, the one of the most powerful one it, it goes like, um, there's nothing in the world that one can achieve without a strong and clear and dedicated goal or purpose. Um, that does the wisdom lost its, uh, it's uh, lost 50% in the translation, but um, 
that gives me a um so that shows how important it is to to have a life purpose right um and i think that is actually um the powerful part and also um yangming philosophy focuses a lot on self reflection and self purifying which in the western language is a a process of um awareness and mindfulness the clearer you can see yourself um the clearer you can see others and that gives us a um a, a smart and um piercing eye um to to see through the world and the essence of things i think that's the that's the beauty of yummy philosophy and also um they um it also applies to entrepreneurship so yummy um academy they have this entrepreneurship course where they help um um they help public companies to make their um 3.0 st strategic plan and they help individuals to make their 10 year plan uh, based on they they heard uh, dao virtues and matters um formula uh and it's been working it's been working with um a lot of individuals young people and companies um and i think um for my company, uh, Bringho, who I'm working with, we're also working with the Yangming uh, Academy to um, to to make our own um, 3.0 strategy plan. And um, the core, if I have to summarize, it's really making a heart-to-heart -heart connection with your customers and with your clients. And with that, you can win in every sales and every um, business partnership because that's what people essentially need in the um, business transaction um, yeah so um, i've seen um, 10 year old five year old and 20 year old students using the 10 year planning um, strategy to make their life plan um, and uh, yeah, I, I actually think it's a very practical tool. I don't know if we could translate that into English and make it um, available to more people. I think uh, there is, I think there's this cultural confidence um, um, book I had from, from the philosophy academies. I think it gave me it some lens of what you just mentioned. It was pretty powerful. I guess with time, there'll be a lot more of that, right, uh, in the future. So. Um, but this this really great. At least I'm sure some of the speakers really understand, kind of, you know, what really guides you and kind of the the framework you have been using to kind of be as great as what you do in brain core as also as a life coach and offering hundred hours. Um, but I just like to close here. What is the thing that you would tell students who are really it's like, oh my gosh, like I don't really know where to start. I have to figure out like. They're just completely lost. Students are young professionals. Where do you think they should start uh, in terms of just trying to get into a path that can be fulfilling, but also have these qualities that you mentioned, uh, maybe either through young philosophy or maybe um, you know whatever what all these amazing philosophies. What what do you suggest for them to? Mm. Um. <laughs> There are lots of <laughs> suggestions people can give, but I think um, nobody can make a make a decision for your life, and the only one single um, heart methodology, herdology, if I could create a word, um, herdology, is um, ask yourself um, who is in need of you, if that's grammarly correct, um, yes. who yeah. you can be a help or um, value for. Because um, I believe the fundamental value of our life is reflected in the people and community that we can help. Just like my one of the Harvard professors that I personally admire the most is um, Professor Clint, Clayton Christensen, yes. who passed away last year. You know him, right? Oh, I um, read his book, Prosperity Paradox. Yeah, yeah the, about the innovators. And he said, really going through the cancer 
um, he realized God doesn't love money and money is not the way that they that he um, measures people's life. It's really the hope that and the impact that we made on others. Um, so I think thinking about who you can be able to impact and what is the, the time and the country um, and the world needing at this moment. Um, I think the only way to get get out of the anxiety and loss, lostness is to stop focusing only on your one person's life. Start thinking about who else is needing your help. And, um, and if you can have that bigger perspective, everything becomes brighter. Mm. And when you enter that brighter world, the problems you are facing right now are not the problems anymore. You don't even need to solve them. They will go away because you've entered a brighter world with a bigger heart that can occupy, that can actually um, accommodate more people in it. That's so beautiful. That's a very good way to cap the episode. Thank you so much, CC, uh, for sharing your life story, um, a little bit of a dad, your, your philosophy, and just the way you think of life and work. Um, I really appreciate your time. CC is the chief human resource. I need to put the chief, chief human resource officer. Hard resource. <laughs> hard resource, yes, hard resource. Chief hard resource officer at Brain Core. A life coach, she offers 100 hours uh, uh, for this year to help 100 people, right? And I'll put down the links of how you can be a part of that and share all the other links that uh, she mentioned in relation to all the, what we discussed on this episode. Um, Thank you so much, CC, and uh, to all our listeners, thanks for listening, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks, CC. Super glad to be here, and I, um, I'm going to be a big fan and subscriber of, of the podcast. Um, there are many interesting souls here, so looking forward to, um, to seeing you next. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. <laughs>